Now we'll say good morning. Yes. I do want to welcome you on this holiday experience called Labor Day. And we celebrate all of the men and women who have worked hard and long and have committed their lives so that we can have the country that we have and the way we have it. And so we honor that today and take time to kind of give thanks to all the men and women who have committed themselves to a better world in which we live in this thing called life. I do want to celebrate each and every one of you this morning as we move into our lesson. We have an important lesson this morning based in the idea that we can at any moment allow ourselves prosperous self-expression. Everybody say prosperous self-expression. Prosperous self-expression. Prosperous self-expression is understanding the best of yourself and then giving not just your former definition, but giving from the understanding. We're told in Job twenty-two twenty-one, 21, acquaint thyself with him and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. Acquaint thyself with this infinite presence. Acquaint thyself with the truth of yourself. Jesus asked 2,000 years ago, don't you know your God? Very interesting question. Our Father, the infinite that made it, everything that we have out of itself is the idea of itself unfolding, and it created us in a way it's never created anything before. That's why we are unique and beautiful. You've never happened before. We are the highest thing we know anything about because we are that which in the infinite is the part of the infinite that could contemplate itself. So we know more about ourselves, and as we do, God knows more about itself by means of us. So as we allow ourselves prosperous self-expression, we begin to understand what we're dealing with when we study this teaching. Because what this teaching is, as Dr. Ernest Holmes said at a um, class uh, he was giving at USC, it was a philosophy class. He was asked to be a guest speaker, and one of the students said, will you define religious science in 25 words? He said, religious science is a correlation of the laws of science, the opinions of philosophy, and the revelations of all religions as applied to human needs and the aspirations of mankind. Aspirations of the human experience. So what are your aspirations? We all have challenges. We all are where we are, and there's something within us, the divine urge that says do more, be more, understand more, give more, receive more. So our challenge is to do what? Understand very clearly, as we are told, with all that getting get the understanding, that no matter how many positive words or prayers or anything else we use, everybody say, I cannot go higher than my self-definition. See, this is why we are encouraging everyone to do what? I love the Bobby's opening treatment. Because if you listen to the words that she said, what she was saying was, wake up to a higher self-definition. You see, when you study religious science, what happens is you are studying multi-layered goodness. Multi-layered goodness. How many have a favorite candy bar? How many can remember the first time you chomped down on that sucker? <laughs> How many remember your body saying, oh, yeah, this is great. Got to get me a box of that. <laughs> and now when you go anywhere there's candy, which one do you look for? Mm, where is it? There it is. Okay. Now, multi-layered goodness. Every time you come in here on a Sunday morning, Wednesday night, and listen, again, I will reinforce what I know how much planning and love has gone into this development of what's happening every Wednesday this month. Do yourself a favor and be here for the experience. But every time you come into any one of these, whether you're coming into a class, a seminar, anything that we do here or any religious science or new thought, unity, divine science, religious science, churches, what you are discovering when you come into it is an a multi-layered experience that gets better the deeper you go. It gets better the longer you study it. It gets better. It's not, you know, here's your book, here's your symbol, here's your prayer, you know, get out of here and, you know, we'll see you next week. 
It is do what? Wake up to an idea of yourself and be this idea in action. It used to drive me crazy when I would come into a religious science church when I was 23 years old at Founders Church with Dr. William Hornaday, and I would walk in and I would see all these people, and I knew a lot of them there, and we all got together on Sunday and let there be peace on earth and positive thinking and wonderful and isn't it great and we're all successful and then they walk out Sunday, uh, Monday morning and act like they never heard of this in their life. Okay? Now, it was, it, that was fine if you were just by yourself, but a lot, of the, a lot of the parents didn't do it. See? This is why we have recommended for years, if you have children in, in our teenage group, in our, in our ch- uh, youth group, in our Sunday school, find out what the teacher taught that morning and go home and be a model of it that week. How many know that would work with kids? Okay, now, I'm gonna take you in the next step. How many know that would work with you? (laughs) How many know that if you hear something wonderful this morning and you just go out and practice it all week, I don't have to convince you that it's true, you'll find out it's true because you're doing it. You see, every class we have is the experience of, first of all, when you find a teaching like this, and even when you find it, the longer you study, the more you know, the more you know there's more to know. So what happens is you find an outer layer and you find out it's wonderful, and then you begin to delve delve deeper and deeper and deeper into it, and you find out more and more, and then you get to the center of it, and you find out, wow, this is great. It gets better the deeper I go, and all of a sudden you find that like a wonderful candy bar, a uh, indescribable, wonderful n- nugget. In. <laughs> you know, center. How many remember that? Finding that center. Okay. Chocolate cherries. <laughs> Anyhow, like a new candy bar, something wonderful is happening right now. Like a new candy bar, something is wonderful is happening anytime you let go of the outer and get yourself centered in the truth of you and let that center greet whatever's in front of you. Not based on any kind of history, any kind of doubt, any kind of fear. What happens when you study this and any of us who are students of this for any length of time know that we discover a happier, healthier, more abundant life and it just keeps getting better and better and better and better and we find out that what we are discovering is not just something we can keep in a book or keep in our head or keep in our you know uh, memorized vocabulary it is something that we are in our heart everyone say as i think in my heart so am i It's not thinking about it, it's thinking as it is. It's not thinking about love, it's thinking as love thinks. Dr. Ernest Holmes says on page 36, one of the first lessons in the Science of Mind textbook, 